Hello and welcome guys. Welcome to this new video. Now, as you can see, the title for this new video is the world has more than 8 billion people and less than 1% of the people are ready for 2030. Now, why is that the title of this video? Because this video is going to give you the tools and the awareness in order for yourself to align yourself, your business or yourself with the technology to enable you to not only stay ahead of the your competitors or the AI trends and the technological trends, but in order to really gain the edge, craft the efficiency and drive capital efficiency right at the end of the day. So this is what we are going to look at. These are 14, I believe 15 or 14 points that, are, that we're going to outline and specifically showing you how to ready for 2030. Okay. So who am I and why should you be listening to me? So my name is Jean-Jacques from Southfold Systems and we work with specifically six to seven figure companies. And I will share uh, in, at a later time, we are working on our first eight figure uh, deal with uh, a big technology company, but that is for a later time. So without further ado, like I said, we work with six to seven figure companies, helping them with the latest technology and innovation, optimization systems processes to drive more efficiency with inside of their operations. Okay. Now there are a lot of moving variables and a lot of moving parts for this, but it, that's not what this video is about. This video is specifically to help you understand how you and I can go ahead and utilize these uh, technologies and also utilize these uh, specific like opportunities. Like we are literally in the gold rush 2.0 right now. It's what we call the gold rush 2.0, right? All of this innovation, all of the, all of these tech innovations and things that are happening right now opens up a world of opportunity. Only if you know how the savvy usually know how to identify the opportunity and to have physical, like, you know, firstly have the awareness, have the information and then physical application towards how you can utilize all these things in your life. And like I said, this, that's what this video is about here. You can see this is one of our uh, new clients, Harold Hamas from creation capital. So you can go and see a little bit more about that. I put here, I put a thing here. Let me just quickly zoom out here. I think I'm a bit too much zoomed in here. As you can see what that company is all about and what they do. Not, that's not what this video is about. So let's get right to it essentially. So firstly, we're going to look at where we are right now and where we have come starting with the first point here, the industrial revolution. Okay. So what is the industrial revolution? So before we get there, you have to understand, like I said, where we are coming from. Okay. Essentially here we have the, as you can see here, firstly, we have the steam based machines. Okay. Little choo choo you can see there. And then secondly, we have electrical energy based mass production. I'm a very visual person. So I decided to, to obviously map out these like this. So thirdly here, we have computer and internet based knowledge. Okay. And obviously in the 20th century and where we are right now, we are in the industrial revolution where we have the big artificial intelligence and basically intelligence and information technology, which is at our disposal right now, which creates a lot of great opportunity, but also a lot it, it, there's always another side to the coin, right? There's the optimist and then there's the other side. So, but these things we need to be aware of. Okay. So we are now in the fourth industrial revolution, a basically a fusion of advances basically, and specifically exponential technologies that is remaking how we think, work and live. Okay. There are big implications thereof. I've talked about uh, specifically aligning with the points that Warren Buffett spoke about uh, the, the artificial intelligence and how this could possibly obviously also become something that hinders our thinking capabilities because we outsource or we outsource everything. However, that's a topic for another time. So the metaverse second point here is the metaverse will become a fundamental existence in basically everyday life. Okay. Now I was on a call two days ago with one of our new clients from the U S and basically I was breaking it down for her that we need to view 
the metaverse, essentially as the game Sims. Why am I giving a that analogy? Because if you've ever played the game Sims, okay, you know that you get your avatar and then you can, you can up, upgrade your avatar and do all sorts of things with your avatar, you, can, you know, relationships, all the kind of stuff. And in order for you, for your brain to really understand what's happening is it's kind of like real life Sims in the reality, okay? Like there are many other things that can happen, but it's a very base fundamental, like you can start there and then you can obviously unpack it further, okay? But what is important here is the average person will use the metaverse as much as people use the internet and smartphone today, okay? So specifically, what does the metaverse do? Okay, we're going to look in terms of work, school, training, shopping, entertainment, fitness, but essentially its capabilities and what it does, okay? As you can see here on this photo, there, like there are many things that it does, okay? But I will make a separate video if you guys want me to unpack everything that is possible and the stuff that are currently happening with inside of the metaverse. But I want to keep this video as concise as possible. I know it's going to be a lengthy video, but it's very, very important. You guys understand all of these things and are aware of them. OK, and then obviously we'll have some implementation at the end of this video as a bonus. Right. So an artificial intelligence assistant. The next point here will be your day to day companion. OK, this little guy or girl over here. OK, so it helps run your life. OK, make high quality decisions and reach your goals. Now, if we break it down back to what agents do and their purpose, etc. Also a whole nother topic for another time. But that is basically what it leads to. You are now aware of you give the machine a little prompt and the better you can prompt the machine. OK, the better the output thereof. OK, it's the better you can break it down in a step by step process, the better you are able to go ahead and get the better inputs, the better outputs. OK, so many people will have therapy or emotional support AI companions. OK, sounds a bit weird, but if you've never seen the movie H.E.R. Her, OK, it is about a human that has a like that has a little thing. Yes, that has a little thing with an AI, OK, which is an assistant kind of based AI. Uh, but I highly, highly recommend you check out that movie. It's actually really, really well put together and bringing it back to, to, the, to things like The Matrix as well. OK, if you have not yet seen that movie, please go and uh, watch it. So uh, I also do want to say this, that inside of this document, you will be able to download this document down below. Uh, click the link down below, make a copy and utilize, dig into these resources and go and see where this information is pulled from. Do not just blindly listen to what I am saying, take your time, do your own research, think for yourself and be aware. Okay. So next point here is AI education will become the norm. So this right here is very close to my heart. Okay. Both of my parents are teachers and I do understand how this will impact them, but I also do understand how people in the education space will be impacted. Okay. Basically like like all sorts of old school teachers essentially will have to learn about the importance of the technology themselves. Okay. And if they do not adapt, if they do not learn, then there is a probability that a machine can replace them. Okay. So that's why I have a lot of passion in making these videos because I know, okay, besides all of the business, besides everything, this technology, especially AI on one end, is going to be very, very important moving forward. And if we do not pay attention to this, we will get left behind. It is, it is simple. Okay. So AI teachers will provide personalized education for all students. Okay. Classes and courses are designed based on the students, interests, inclinations, and goals. For an example, I never used to be the A plus student. I was kind of like B, C, kind of like C, B. If I did really well, I would do B's, but Point being is I was never the kid in class that would like put up my hand and like answer all the questions immediately. OK, I was kind of like a little bit laid back, kind of like fearful of me not giving the right answer. OK, so that was me growing up through school. School never used to be my greatest um, thing. OK, I, I never used to be fantastic at school. 
So, like I said, I was there in the middle. I was kind of there, you know, working hard essentially, but that was kind of that situation. And now all of that is about to change and on a very rapid pace. So AI could save education. And I want you to go and look at this person called um, Saul Khan, basically. Okay, he is the founder and the CEO of the Khan Academy. And he specifically thinks that artificial intelligence could spark the greatest positive transformation that education has ever seen. Please go look at this YouTube video. Um, like I said, click the doc down below, uh, hit the link there in the YouTube video. There's a bunch of resources. I spent a lot of time compiling this video, putting this together for you guys, because I know the physical implementation thereof is going to be the most important thing once you have access to the right info, okay? So specifically, this is a tweet where you can go and source this from also, where I sourced this info from was from a tweet. Um, so basically, AI teachers dramatically, bringing it back to the point, AI teachers dramatically lower all basic costs in the education system, allowing hundreds and millions more access to free, high quality education. Human teachers will act as personal mentors, coaches, and guides, okay? human interaction and i'm going to hook this point where i'm going to talk about information agnostic because and i'm going to give you a business example right now because like so a week a week and a half ago i had a meeting uh with one of our new clients a big tech company okay and um they have uh, been through the process where they have raised a bunch of money okay they've deployed it they're doing certain things and now we are stepping in to help them optimize everything they're doing to have, like I said in the beginning of this video, number one, everything to do to be optimized for capital efficiency because no one cares about anything else bef before that needle actually moves, okay? Now, this is also where the edge comes in with this. But the point with information agnostic here, which I, when I had this meeting with uh, the CEOs, essentially I said that right now, the tech is advancing so fast, okay? It is getting so good that you and I will not know whether we are talking to a robot or whether we are talking to a human. What does that create now? It, it creates this problem where, number one, humans do not like talking to robots. We've seen this when you're on customer support on some website or something and there's a chat bot or, and it pops up like, a, like an old school chat bot and you need to chat with this thing or, and it gives you these redundant answers and you get so angry, okay? So number one, again, because the, the, the tech is getting so good, we will not know whether we are talking to a robot or to a human, which creates the problem of information agnostic where a creator, a set player, will have to be connected to the information or to the service that the business is delivering to create more throughput and more efficiency in getting their customers or cold audiences to believe or to have a higher sense of credibility or believability in that product that they're selling with and amongst for them to differentiate with their competitors. Okay, please listen to that again. Now, moving on. So we have here 99% of all activity will be on the blockchain, the next point, period, okay? You and I have both heard of this thing called cryptocurrency. We've been aware of it. We've seen the hype cycles. We've seen like obviously the different cyclical nature inside of the, the technology adoption with all of the crypto nerds and people really loving the tech and understanding the tech. And the majority of the people now catching on to its user uh, capabilities and how important it is moving into the future, which we will latch onto centralized and decentralized tech in a minute. Okay, so I'm not going to walk through this process. You can take your time, look this, look up, just look up this document. I want to stick to the sole points with, which we have right here. So you can see what this process is like if you go and follow it through here. Um, it's really, I try to really simplify everything down. I've been working a lot on this in, in, in the way that we present our message at Southport Systems and how we actually help companies. So this is um, one of uh, my attempts, obviously, to help you fully understand uh, and, and like simplify these processes, okay? So firstly, everyone including governments will use cryptocurrency because of their ease to use. Increased security and privacy is going to become so, so important moving forward, okay? So the internet and social media will be decentralized and secure, right? We've also seen things like Mr. B starting his own sort of social media, right? With his own rules. And we have also become aware of this different sorts of economies and economies of scale, which it's, I'm not going to, you know, we'll, 
we'll, I'll just briefly mention that. Uh, where firstly we had the platforms, okay, we had the YouTube, you had the well, let's just say the Facebook, uh, we had the um, the Instagram, etc. And now the creators are becoming the dominant players in the market, and people are latching onto this, coming back to information agnostic, and these people will become uh, the next billionaires, etc. Okay, uh, simply because of all these relationships coming together in scalability with things as well, and the technology, obviously. So centralized versus decentralized um, internet. Okay, again, as I've said, let me zoom into this here real quick. As we go to 125, maybe 150 will be good. Um, so we go to 150. So specifically what we have here, of, of course, you can see here centralized service. We have the internet and we have devices. And obviously that's a very quick, easy ABC example explanation of this. And you can see a little bit more complex scenario here on the right, which however, uh, go do your own research on this. and. Um, this is not a video, like I said, to break up this, all these processes is simply to bring the awareness towards your forefront so that you can do the work and obviously utilizing these certain points, whichever one applies to your business. Okay. Utilizing them and obviously driving efficiency. So banks will no longer exist in any recognizable form. Now this is debatable, however, obviously, right? My point here is that the financial revolution, okay specifically with the financial revolution is that coordination of financial services and contracts outside of the purview of traditional financial institutions okay traditional finance and decentralized finance let's quickly look at this in 2022 okay in 2022 decentralized financial services democratized resilience relative to their centralized counterparts in 2008 to 2009 OK, so in the face of fraud, undisciplined risk and non-transparent operators demanded for decentralized audibility for transparent financial services specifically is stronger than ever. OK, so let's quickly look at this one, which is a fascinating point here on the real estate transactions will be taking place on the blockchain. OK, now. I'm not a real estate expert, but I will, however, introduce you to all of these points here below. So again, take your time, do your own research and do your own thinking. OK, however, please be aware of these. So the blockchain will make elections more secure and transparent by assigning an ID to each voter and easily keeping track of those votes. Now, this also is super important because we have seen what is happening currently and what has happened in the past with a lack of transparency to our votes actually you know making a difference or you're you're spending your time standing in some some queue putting your vote in does it actually make a difference you know can you trust the system what we're seeing right now and i'm gonna make my point is that also the incentivizers are changing the incentives are changing in the systems a lot of systems architecture are changing and the systems are all evolving so fast, okay, with the incentive structures were changing as well, obviously because of the tech. So the entertainment industry will be entirely transformed. Now, before I get there, I, I do not want to spend too much time on here because I choose to keep my opinion for myself when it comes to political things. However, the current studio system will no longer exist. This is the next point, okay, bringing back to the entertainment industry. All right. So instead of a series of decentralized organizations and communities, we'll create and distribute film and TV productions. Now I want to bring my point back to this. Is firstly on the Bitcoin. Well, the let's let's bring it back. The cryptocurrency example, the blockchain example, is we actually. So two months ago, we started to work with a really really exciting project. Okay where we are working with some major players. Now these are seven and eight figure companies and one big major connector with inside of these, uh, you know, these ecosystems, bringing different counterparts together, like payment transactions, education, um, bringing like these uh, tech education into school systems, where it's now becoming a thing for you to have a uh, blockchain or as a, as a, as a subject, etc. And this is very, very exciting. I can't wait to share that case study with you guys on what we're doing there. But bringing it back to this point also here, because it's top of my mind right now, uh, one of our clients, uh, Timon Creek, basically um, 
So I have these uh, basically strategy sessions with most of the clients that we work with. And one of the topics that I discussed with him, and you can go and check the case study with uh, Timon on our website. Uh, our new website will be up soon. We've done some restructuring work and some updates based on our case studies and everything on there, some UX, UI design stuff. Um, to make it more crispy um, so that you guys can also see the work that we've done. But the point is, what I went through with him is explaining to him the current systems and the structures and the incentives around things like uh, the the current like uh, Netflix model, okay, or the, the current like Hollywood model, or whatever you want to call that, but also explaining how the incentives are connected to what he's currently doing and his overall long-term mission which is super, super important that we understand our clients' long-term mission goals and helping them obviously find the, the most optimal point of efficiency, solving the actual problem to drive growth in their operations, right? And my point is here that this, what's happening right here, obviously uh, plays a big role in, in our client uh, Timon stuff, right? So now also being that, for that being said, not only him, but multiple other uh, influencers, or uh, music people, uh, you know, obviously everyone that is involved in the entertainment industry, okay? Now, next point here is that uh, the, the communities, okay? I just wanna make my point here. The communities control the narratives, storylines, character development, casting distribution, and more, okay? Filmmakers, talent, and fans will shape the productions that the world sees. Now, you can also go and look at, I believe it's Gen 2, of uh, Dali, okay, or well, basically, you could start with Mid Journey or Dali, and that is also going to shake everything up, okay? It's 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 insane. So you can go and check that out, right? So the results of this is is more, many more higher quality stories will be told, okay, and much larger audiences are served, and the box office is off the charts, okay? Basically, creatives are pr probably compensated. As I have said, the uh, let me switch off this alarm. As I have said, that basically the uh, the creatives are properly compensated, which means that the incentive structures are changing in the system. Okay, and fandoms and fan fiction are respected and rewarded. Okay, that's why community in this new world that we are right now is one of the main driving factors and forces because it's little ecosystems inside of these communities. Um, that are led by a leader that people look up to. They have a little incentivized community. And inside of that community, there are different dynamics, different cultures, different dynamics at play, which drive all sorts of cool things inside of a business until you actually see it. Okay, self-driving cars. Next point here, self-driving cars will become a big, well, I, I, I've recorded this video once and I, I, I was like, this is the, the pronunciation of this word is, Obiquous, I said obnoxious the first time, so just <laughs> want to laugh with me, but anyway, so um, what are we looking at here? Okay, so this tweet went semi-viral by this guy, okay? So I wanted to draw this to your attention because it's kind of what it is. It's like we will be standing there, you know, wherever at some cafe or some restaurant, and we'd be like 20, 30 from now, we'd be like, you know, we once had self-driving cars, okay? Or, or not self-driving cars, but we, you know, how, how was it before self-driving cars essentially? Is we drove the cars ourselves. I'd be like, whoa, what? There probably was a whole lot of accidents, right? Or, you know, that kind of following that line of thought is that specifically thinking in terms of like, well, once we had cars that we were driving, and we were probably causing a lot of accidents, but now if you think about it in the other way, you think maybe self-driving cars will also cause a lot of accidents because it's so easy for some guy that wants to do mischief to hack them with some sort of a thing, right? But So there are many ways to think about this, but essentially what this tweet is saying is that, so what did you do before self-driving cars is we just drove them ourselves? Whoa, no, um, uh, whoa. <laughs> No one died that way. Okay. Oh no. Millions of people died. Okay. So you get my point. So no one will drive anymore. That is the point. Okay. And that is happening right now. We've all, you've already seen Tesla and you've already seen how good it's getting. Okay. So here's the current state of the automobile accidents of number of crashes, obviously with self-driving um, agents, let's call them. <laughs> people okay so 3d printing will transform design and manufacturing across every 
major industry. Okay. Now I have a friend that has specifically shown me that he's very much into this part of uh, this craft. And he specifically showed me what he has been able to print with a home 3D printer, okay, which is very cool. And this is my next point here. But anyways, we're going to look at printing things like uh, housing, apparel, parts, medicine, healthcare, food and beauty, and a lot of different sides of innovation. Okay, so this is my point here. Uh, every single house will have this little 3D printer, okay, and it will produce almost any item we could need specifically things like vaccines or robots. And that's kind of a bit, you know, there's two sides to that. There's always two, three sides to a coin. Okay. But anyways, so billions of robots will populate the world alongside humans, which is the next one here. Now we've obviously already been, you know, if you paid attention to all of the movies that Hollywood has been showing us, Netflix has been showing us, then that will ring a few bells, right? So many will have personal robots that help out with uh, specifically household cleaning, okay? And specifically laundry, making you a slice of toast, you know, must be some interesting world. So professional robots will perform specifically like surgical operations, um, like security patrols, you know, deliveries and so on, like your Uber Eats driver will be replaced, uh, maybe we, we, even with a drone, you know, some stuff that you do, like order on Amazon or some stuff. It's already happening where Amazon is obviously de delivering some things with drones, etc. cetera. Um, so yeah, uh, it's a very, very, very interesting world which we are moving towards, right? So now this next thing called CRISPR, okay? And gene therapies will minimize our Will, will minimize or cure many diseases. You can look into this, okay? And this specifically, the point here is gene therapies, 3D printing, specifically organs and blood vessels, nanoparticles, and nanorobotics, okay? I am not going to go deep into this process here. However, you can have a full overview. Just look at the, uh, make a copy of the document and you can go deeper into that. Um, and you can obviously go through everything, all the info that I put on there. So next point here is that death from cardiovascular diseases could reach negligible levels, okay? 33%, if you go and look at the stats here, 33% die from heart diseases, 80% die from cancers. However, a lot of these things will be solved in a different matter or at a, a larger scale, essentially, right? So there's many different ways you can think about this. So here are some of the most powerful technologies that will transform the world in the next few years, which is one of my last points, okay? So green energy, drones, flying cars, specifically material sciences, internet of things, plant-based meats, digital farming, and mega-scale geoengineering and drinkable ocean water, just to name a few, okay? Now, guys, I know this has been a mouthful, but go ahead, download the document down below, take this info, do your own research and take the, the nuggets and go in a, like wherever it applies to you, take the awareness, take the info and wherever it applies into the direction of the thing that it is that you are working on. Uh, or maybe you just want to share this with a friend. Okay. If you feel like this video brought you any value, please leave a like and a comment section and comment down below on anything I should work on in my presentations or any of these videos or videos you guys would want me to see uh, unpack or address certain topics and I will do that for you guys, okay? So let's quickly look at a quick summary of what is happening over here, okay? So to some of these 14 bullets specifically is that number one, the business owners or the, the people, let's call it the humans, who specifically align themselves with the technology will dominate their respective niches, okay? Period. Now, you can either go ahead and you can do this yourself, which will be very time consuming and it will cost you a lot of money and opportunity cost in trying to figure out all of these puzzles and trying to put things together, downloading this thing here, doing that there, playing this chat GPT thing, or you can simply go ahead and work with us, which is an option, okay? But the next summary here is what is the most important for this video. So number one, understand the importance of the fourth industrial revolution. The metaverse will be a fundamental part of everyday existence. You will have your own R2-D2 or C-3PO AI assistant, and it will be your day-to-day -day companion, okay? So we will have a AI therapist, okay? 
AI education will be the norm. 99% of all online activity will be done on the blockchain. Everyone, including the government, will use cryptocurrency. Banks will no longer exist in any recognizable form. The entertainment industry will be entirely transformed and communities will control the narrative. Self-driving cars, okay, might be a thing. 3D printing will transform design and manufacturing across every single industry, okay? Billions of robots will populate the world. And the CRISPR will minimize or cure many diseases. And this specifically brings me to the last one, specifically is that tech is busy evolving, disrupting the world, okay? And technology, specifically like green energies, drones, flying cars, material sciences, the internet of things, plant-based materials, digital farming, mega-scale geoengineering, as I've just said, basically, with and also drinkable ocean water is going to be what the world is rapidly moving towards, which makes this an abundance of opportunity for the savvy, for the evolutionary hunters who take action right now. And out of my experience, those are the people who usually dominate and do not only well for themselves, but they are able to build companies that have a like a long lasting impact and effect for not only themselves, but the people around them, the communities and the earth or the world overall. Those are the people that we work with and those are the people we know crush. So lastly, guys, if this video brought any sort of value to you, as I've said, please leave a like, Leave a comment in the comment section down below. And if there's anything that you guys want me to cover, please do let me know. And as always, guys, take this information, take it, apply it, use it for good, and go make a difference for someone in this world today. I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye-bye.